If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. We have drawn a free body diagram showing the three forces that are mentioned in the question. We've got the gravitational force that's acting straight down, which we've marked FG. We have the force F1 that's acting in this direction. Notice we've drawn a 120 degree angle, as the question suggested. And then the force F2 is pointing off in this direction at a 20 degree angle. In part A, we're asked for the mass of the object. And to solve for the mass, we're going to consider the gravitational force. Now, the gravitational force is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And we can solve this equation for the mass by dividing both sides of it by g. And so when we do that, we can see that the mass is the gravitational force divided by g. The question gives us the gravitational force magnitude as 325 newtons. So we can plug that in. And then g has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we simply divide 325 by 9.8, we'll obtain the mass. And when we do that, we get about 33.2, and the standard unit of mass will be kilograms. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. Now for part B, we're going to use this table that we've set up over here. And in the table, what you want to do is put all of the forces along the left side of the table. Now we have the gravitational force, Fg. We have F1 and then we have F2. And then what you also want to make sure you do is draw an extra row here showing the total force acting on the object. And let's actually consider the total force acting on the object. Notice in part B the question says that the object undergoes no acceleration. So if you look at Newton's second law which says that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. When they say no acceleration, what they're telling us is that the value of A is zero. And so if we plugged zero into the right-hand side of the equation, then we would have mass times zero. And of course, that still equals zero. So what it all means is that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. That means in our force chart over here, when we have marked the total force, that means we can put a zero in for the X as well as a zero in for the Y. Again, because the total force is equal to zero. And so that's a key idea that we're going to take advantage of as we solve this problem. Now let's come back to the gravitational force, which is acting straight down. Because it's acting straight down, the x component will be zero newtons. However, it will, of course, have a y component, and that will have a value of 325 newtons. Now, because it's pointing downward, you've got to make sure that you call that negative 325 newtons. We next move on to F1. And we can see that F1 was acting at that 120 degree angle. Now, as long as your angle is measured from the x-axis, from the positive x-axis, I should say, then we can simply use the cosine of that angle for the x component. So in other words, what we're going to do for the x component is take the value of F1, which is 310, and we're going to multiply that by the cosine of that angle. Remember, the angle of F1 was 120 degrees. Now, for the y component, you can always use the sine of the angle as long, again, as long as that angle is measured from the positive x-axis, as it is in this case. So we're going to take the 310 newtons and multiply it by the sine of 120 degrees. Now, F2, we do not know its magnitude. And so for the x component, we can say F2 times the cosine of its angle, which was 20 degrees. And then for the y component of F2, we'll have F2 times the sine of 20 degrees. Now to actually solve for F2, what we can do is consider the three forces in the x direction. Remember that all three of these forces are going to have a total value of zero. And so what that means is that when you add those three x direction forces together, you should be able to set that equal to zero. And then we're going to try to solve for F2. So why don't we subtract 310 cos 120 over to the right hand side. And then we could divide both sides of the equation by cos 20 that's going to allow us to solve for F2. And then what you want to do is pick up your calculator and type in this expression right here in parentheses. And just make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. 
And when you do that, you get about 165 newtons. So this will be the correct answer for the magnitude of F2. Notice, by the way, that you could have also solved for the magnitude of F2 by adding the Y forces together and setting them equal to zero. Let's quickly show that. And so we'll come over here. We'll take the first Y force and we'll add it to the second Y force and then add it to the third one and we'll set it equal to zero. Now once again, we're trying to solve for F2, which is right here. So let's add the 325 over. We could then subtract this 310 sine 120 over to the right hand side. And then finally divide both sides of the equation by sine 20 so that it cancels out on the left hand side. So we'll cancel here. And then when you carefully type this expression into your calculator, you should obtain the same answer. You should get about 165 newtons for the magnitude of F2. And so that confirms our previous.